Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about the deuteragonists of the Dark or Bronze Era, depending on what you like to title this era, and to be honest, this really isn't going to be a video or a category that I'm thrilled on because I don't like many of them. Not even going to waste much time, let's just get right to it. At 8th place is Elon Wee. The cast of the movie just does not do it for me whatsoever. One, it's confusing why she was a princess to begin with, since it never becomes of any importance and it's not used to give her any additional development. While she was right about the sword and not Terran having the power, she was really annoying throughout the entire movie, had no growth or depth whatsoever, and I didn't like her interactions with the cast, which makes it even more contrived and worse when she and Terran get together at the end of the movie. It is interesting to see her as a middle point between the classic princesses and the renaissance princesses, since she does have traits of both. At 7th place is Little John. To be honest, what affects his role and placement on this category is that his voice actor, Phil Harris, essentially played the same role in three consecutive movies, and Little John is easily the weakest one, and with this being the most recent of the three roles, of course it just makes him look like a lesser character compared to Baloo and Thomas O'Malley. What we know is that he is best friends with Robin Hood and helps him steal from the rich to give to the poor. They have a nice dynamic with one another, and he even gives advice pertaining Maid Marian, but we really don't know much about him on his own, and he's essentially given no development or depth either for me to justify putting him any higher. At sixth place is Christopher Robin. Clearly, the world is based off of Christopher Robin's imagination, so it all kind of ties down to him. But even with that, I wasn't sure as to whether I should call him the deuteragonist or not. But clearly, I've made up my mind. With how the film is set up, a lot of things are about Christopher Robin, but he's never as present as the others, but he's still considered to be the deuteragonist. The main thing that stands out to me about Christopher Robin is the final conversation he has with Winnie the Pooh, telling him that he won't be able to hang out with him as much because he's going to school, and I found that to be an interesting way to develop him as a character, and as kind of like a growing up moment, where his childhood is starting to become different, and it's a lot more isolated and a lot less removed from what toddlers kind of imagine and how they spend their time, since Christopher Robin's going to school and he's going to have to focus on that. At fifth place is Dodger. It is clear to me that he was supposed to represent everything that was cool about the 1980s and the type of quote-unquote cat from that decade, and as a character, he has aged relatively horribly, since a lot of what made the 80s cool, especially with a lot of those stereotypes, are horrible now. He is only this high on the list, which isn't even that high, because he is more interesting than the other characters, and he does have some sort of an arc. He starts off the film conning on over out of hot dogs or sausages, but then starts to care for the cat, though it's really rushed how quickly he cares for him, and then is saddened when Oliver decides to live with Penny, so he has to deal with those emotions and accepting that he is less cold-hearted than he appears. So, at fourth place is Miss Bianca. I've mentioned that for these videos, I'm going to consider one person a protagonist and the other will be a deuteragonist, and I've discussed why I considered Bianca to be the deuteragonist, not only in the Renaissance video, but in the protagonist video for this era as well. She is chosen to work on the next mission, and everyone wanted to work with her because she's attractive and didn't feel like a woman could do that herself, so she has to overcome that, but it's not really done in a way that is an arc, in my opinion. She chose Bernard, and seeing their interactions and how she caused him to let his gun down was great to watch, and seeing how she handles the missions is interesting. She's a very likable mouse, but she doesn't develop, so I'm placing her here. At third place is David Q. Dawson. He is very forgotten as a character in Disney's pantheon, even amongst this era, and I don't recall many people talking about him at all, but he is the real heart of the film, in my opinion. He is coming from his trip elsewhere as a doctor, and seems like he wants a change in his life, almost like he's in a midlife crisis of some sorts. 
Somehow, David ends up working with Basil to help with the mystery of figuring out what happened with Olivia's father, and the two of them started to bond with one another as they solved this mystery. I found it interesting that David ended up completely changing career paths, which is something we rarely see in animated movies in general, much less Disney movies, as he ended up being Basil's investigative assistant, which was nice in my opinion. At second place is Copper. Like I mentioned with Todd in the last video, Copper heavily benefits due to us seeing him as a child and growing into an adult with all of the transitions, emotions, and changes that come with it. Copper was a naive dog who didn't know much about society and thinks he will be BFFs with Todd forever, but he goes on a trip where he becomes an adult, essentially, and becomes fully integrated with the society he is a part of. He is saddened that Tim and Todd cannot be friends, but is fine to accept it and his role in society. Of course, they are forced to go against one another after his brother was injured, but things change and Copper eventually protects Todd from being murdered from his owner, Amos Slade, and they have a somber but respectful goodbye as they part ways. I like how his arc kind of shows that sometimes friendship and love isn't enough and society is just too strong. It's a realistic message for children and anyone in general that sometimes friends are Friendships and relationships are only around for a short season, and not for a long reason. So, at first place is Thomas O'Malley. I was not expecting to have him as the number one spot whatsoever, especially with the reputation of the Aristocats. He ends up bumping into Duchess and her family as they are stranded, and while he is mainly interested because he wants to flirt with her, he does feel bad about their situation and genuinely wants to help Duchess and her children get back to their owners. Throughout the movie, not only does he bond with Duchess, but he bonds with her children, and seeing step families and blended families being portrayed in this movie was very interesting to me. It was implied that Thomas was somewhat of a playboy, but he becomes more domesticated and wants to change his ways to be a good example for Duchess and her kids, as they all have some really nice discussions, so he had that change. So that is my rankings of the deuterogonists of the Dark or Bronze Era. Like I mentioned beforehand, this era isn't really known for its character development, but I do think the deuterogonists in general have the same amount of development as the protagonists, but I don't know if that's a positive for the deuterogonists or the negatives for a negative for the protagonists. Luckily, I have enough protagonists on their own to talk about them in a separate video. Thank you all for watching and I'll be back with something else soon.